today I'm gonna talk about the K weld, uh, this spot welder made in Germany. We are using this a lot, but we are using it from factories. Recently, we had a chance to buy a used K weld from a do it yourself for in Sweden. We bought a K weld with all the accessories just to build one battery pack, so we got it fairly cheap. And he bought it with the power supply and the capacitor housing. And it's a little different from ours. He has also spent a lot of time 3D printing a case in this holder. And we also get a big box he had custom made and a few spare parts. However, we have not been able to get this one working properly. Uh, now I have calibrated it. I'm just going to use some dead A123 since they have a lot of space to connect. Nothing happens. I can feel the cables jumping. And it actually did a little. Let's increase. To 11. Yeah, and the problem we're having is that they are getting holes in the nickels instead of uh, welding it properly. Yeah. We usually sand them down to remove any nickel that's stuck on them. And that you should probably do every time you get a bad. Um, bad weld. It might be this pen who make, which makes it difficult to have the right pressure, uh, but I think he, we got a pretty good weld. You can still pull it off. Uh, it's one of the negative side. Yes, that's the negative side on these cells and they have this went. I really don't like spot welding these cells. Ah, pretty good. Let's go up to 12. Yeah, I can feel it shaking a little bit. Uh, I'm getting pretty good results so far. Uh, my employee probably had bad luck, but he was using 18650s. And let's see if we can do it the continuous mode. Mode. Auto, that's the way I like it. That means you do not use uh, the foot pedal um, when it feels connectivity, it waits a few milliseconds and then it welds, and that's usually the fastest way. Let's see, trigger delay 0 0.5 seconds. That, that, that is okay. If you're a professional, you can have it like 0 2. If you're a beginner, you should probably have like one second. And yeah, okay, okay, okay. I'm getting pretty good weld and not that many blow throughs. Well, I'm gonna go get some 18650s and see if that might be the problem. So, and we were also using nickel plated steel, which we have in this box. So, let's use something that's most likely pure. And an 18650. I think the problem is both, uh, both pins are not connected with the same pressure. Uh, many handheld spot weld machines usually have pins that they can go in a little bit so you make sure you have good pressure. As you can see, it's very difficult to connect both at the same time. There took like over a second for me to get. So I think this, this part is the thing that is making it a little bit more difficult to weld with. It looks really good, it feels really good, but it can be very difficult to pinpoint both of these pins with the same pressure on the cell. Ah, that does fairly good. I'm gonna grab some thicker nickel. Here we have some 0 0.2 pure nickel, about seven millimeter wide. Yeah, I'm 
gonna go up to about at least 14. It's difficult to have an exact angle upwards. It's a little bit more common that you have put it on the side because then you can see better and it just works better. Nice. And we're not getting too much heat output. So I feel this one is working properly. And um, I don't like that that you have to buy a used power supply from a server. I think that is very strange. They have this list of acceptable power supply that works with their capacitor bridge. And I think it's really strange that they only have used ones. So that's why we're using batteries. Uh, but it works kind of like a battery. When we disconnect uh, this adapter, then um, the spot welding capacitor bridge is still on and the spot welder is on. I don't know if it's for 10 minutes or for one hour, but this one acts as a battery and powers the cable until it's drained. So I, I don't think that's a big deal, but it's a little bulkier than a battery. But I like it. It works good. It feels professional and uh, I would like longer wires, but you should have as short wires as possible because longer wires means more resistance and shorter wires means better weld. I will work a little bit more with this one, but it actually works great if you get it up and running. Uh, I'm a little afraid of getting a short circuit since uh, this one is not isolated at all. However, this is like uh, 15 volt DC or something. Uh, but it takes some time to calibrate and learn all the settings. Calibrating is a bit difficult. Can you exit? I'll just exit the menu, so I thought you'd had a shutdown. But the, this one is always on when it's connected to a battery, so it's important that you have good connectors that are easy to uh, take apart and you don't actually have to take apart both of them just one of them Or in this case when you're using an adapter you can just Take take away its power source 